Hello, my name is Kevin Hind and we're going to talk in this presentation about point and arc price elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand is a measure of how responsive quantity demanded is to percentage changes in the product price. You can see in front of you there is a definition of price elasticity demand. It's the price elasticity of demand is equal to the percentage change in the quantity demanded, which we can call Q, over the percentage change in the product price, which we can call P. And the little triangle represents the, the word change. And we can rewrite that particular st uh, equation in terms of the price elasticity of demand is equal to the change in Q, change in quantity, over the original quantity Q and divide that by the change in price over the original price and we can rearrange that again just to show that the change in quantity over the change in price multiplied by the price times the quantity so what we have on that right hand side of that equation is that the, uh, the changes in the quantity over the change in price multiplied by the ratios of the original prices and quantities now this measure is known as point elasticity it is a measure of price elasticity at a point on the demand curve however it's only if we use calculus uh, by which we measure very small change at the point in the curve that we get actually more precision in our measure of elasticity and the formula that we would use for price elasticity demand using calculus would be PED is equal to dq over dp multiplied by p over q where d is an infinitesimally small change in a variable in this case d at q is a just very small change in q and dp is a very very small change in p however when we look at the price elasticity using the point measure we call against a problem. What we find is that elasticity varies when we move up and down the demand curve over large distances. And what we've said in this particular screen is let's take a point like a move from B to C and we'll use our original uh, definition of price elasticity there's a percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. So if we move from B to C you can see that moving from B to C the percentage change in quantity is a move from a quantity of 1 to a quantity of 2 so that's a 100% change in the quantity but in moving from B to C the price has fallen from 5 to 4 which is a 20% fall in quantity so our price elasticity of demand in a move from B to C is minus 5 so that is a very elastic measure you can clearly see that the proportionate change in quantity is far greater than the proportionate change in price but if we move from C to B that is back up the demand curve we actually get a different number a different elasticity coefficient and here we've done the, the numbers for you it's again if we go look at the percentage change in quantity going from C to B we go from 2 to 1 so that's a fall of 50% uh, whereas the price has gone up by 25% so that we get an elasticity coefficient of minus 2 again it's elastic but it's considerably different to the measure when we go from B to C so when we go from B to C or C to B then we, uh, we have a different measure of elasticity so how should we address this issue? well one measure is to use um, point elasticity but uh, if we're looking at large gaps another way is to use what's called the arc measure of price elasticity here we have the formula for the arc elasticity measure um, and the price elasticity of demand in this case is the change in Q over the midpoint of Q divided by the change in P over the midpoint of P which is equal to the change in Q over the change in P multiplied by mid, the midpoint P uh, divided by the midpoint Q in other words what we've eradicated here is the problem with the point elasticity by taking a midpoint between P and a midpoint between Q 
the change in Q and the change in P um, haven't effectively uh, changed, although the signs might change depending on which way we're going up and down the, the curve. But we, the original problem resulted because we had different base values for P and Q. So taking mid P and mid Q uh, eradicates that and we get an average measure. And we're going to demonstrate that now. So here we've got our same graph and we're going to uh, look at the, the move from uh, B to C and it's the same if we went from C to B which we'll say something about in a moment but if we go from um, B to C then we go we've got the, the, elast the arc elasticity measure which is the change in Q over the change in P times the midpoint P and the mid over the midpoint Q so the change in P is uh, if we're going from B to C is uh, minus 1 the price has fallen by minus 1 and that's in the uh, denominator in our uh, our measure of price elasticity using the art method and the change in uh, Q when we move from B to C is uh, positive 1 now the midpoints are just simply taking the, the two numbers when we move from one to another and taking the midpoint so when we move from B to C the price uh, falls from 5 to 4 so the midpoint is 5 plus 4 divided by 2 it's 4.5 and the mid Q is uh, we move from B to C it's we move from one quantity de uh, one unit demanded to two units demanded so the midpoint is 1.5 so in this example we see that the um, price elasticity coefficient is now negative 3 so using our formula which is a, a sort of an intermediate position before what, between what we had before if you remember moving from B to C when we moved from B to C we had uh, an elasticity of negative 5 and when we, had, when we moved from C to B then we had an elasticity of negative 2 and although we haven't calculated the move from C to B here, you can clearly see that it's exactly the same uh, number. All that changes is instead of having uh, the change in P is equal to minus 1, the change in P is equal to plus 1, and the change in Q is equal to minus 1. So we get the same uh, negative 3 number when we move from C to B. So let's have a, a look at one of the a, a question and you may remember this from a previous example but what we said is that the if the price of a newspaper rose from one pound to one pound ten and its daily sales uh, fell from ten million to nine point eight million what's the price elasticity of demand now if we use the point measure which is what we're doing here we would get a figure equating to minus 0.2 so that's uh, what we're saying here is the, the, the price is going up from uh, £1 to £1.10 so the change in P is 0.1 it's a, a tenth of a pound if you like the change in quantity is 0.2 million it's a negative number because quantity the sales quantity demanded as measured by sales is falling by 0.2 of a million and we multiply that by the original price and original quantity where the original price for the newspaper was £1 and the original sales were £10 million. so what we get is negative 0 0.2 if we however um, looked at the price elasticity of demand um, if the price had fallen from £1.10 to £1 and sales had risen from £9.8 million to £10 million, that is seen it the other way around we would have got a, a different uh, elasticity coefficient again we're using the point elasticity measure change in Q over the change in P multiplied by the original price over the original quantity and so here all that's happened is that the the base figures, the, the, the initial points from which we measure uh, price and quantity have changed and the uh, negative sign has moved from the uh, numerator in the, in the top example to the denominator so 
what's happened is that sales have increased quite as a measure of quantity demand is we're suggesting that sales have risen from 9.8 to 10 million that's a 0.2 of a, a million increase the prices have fallen from one pound ten to one pound so that's negative 0.1 the change in price is negative 0.1 the, ori the original uh, uh, original price here was one pound ten and the original sales or quantity demanded were 9.8 million so we get negative 0.224 both of the numbers that we use both the elasticity coefficients are inelastic but they are different and that can uh, cause some consternation for uh, certainly for purists and certainly if you're in business and you don't know which way to, to, to work these numbers out so again we could use the arc measure and that's what we've done here we've uh, just done it from um, the, the point of view of, of the price rises from £1 to £1.10 daily sales fall from £10 million to £9.8 million. what's the price elasticity of demand using the art method uh, we haven't done it the other way around but you can, and you can try that out in your own time but it's exactly the same number basically what we find is that the uh, price elasticity of demand is equal to the change in Q over the change in P multiplied by the midpoint of P and the midpoint of Q so the, as we've got a rise from £1 to £1.10 uh, and the sales, or which we're suggesting are quantity demanded, uh, fall from £10 million to £9.8 million, then what you, you get here is um, a price rise of um, a, a price rise of uh, plus 0.1 the prices have gone up and the uh, quantity demanded has fallen by uh, 0.2 of a million the midpoint of price is uh, 1.05 one between £1 and £1.10 and the midpoint for quantity demanded as measured by daily sales is 9.9 .9 between 10 million and 9.8 million and this gives us a measure of minus 0 0.212 uh, as our elasticity coefficient and you might remind yourself of what that particular coefficient is telling us uh, well this is an average coefficient because we've got quite large jumps between price and quantity uh, but it's, it's saying something quite significant as all elasticity coefficients do what it's telling us is that if we raise the uh, price of a newspaper by 10 pence then we would expect a um, then that was a 10% change in price we would expect a 2.12% fall in the quantity demanded. Thanks very much for listening.